Hi there and welcome to another This Week in F1. We've been a bit quiet lately because I've been away for work in Ethiopia. Well, there's a little search engine search for you. Google Ethiopia, see where it is, beautiful country. Want to see some of the stuff we filmed there, which was not for Formula One, but for some other channels? Go to the A Travels vlog and check it out soon over the next couple of months. But we're not here to talk about traveling. We are here to talk about Formula One, so let's get going. First up, Vettel states the obvious. We need to do a better job in a lot of areas, says Vettel. Of course, in the first two races of the season, Sebastian Vettel, four times world champion, has finished 15th both times, being beaten by teammate Lance Stroll. This time he wasn't allowed to finish the race, as I think his gearbox backed up on the second last lap. Of course, he was also given a penalty earlier in the race, and on the penalty, Vettel said, we broke a rule, I guess. That's why we got a penalty, but they didn't bother to penalize us until way into the race. So by that time, the penalty cost a lot more than it would have earlier. Vettel would go on to say it wasn't very professional, but he also said it wasn't the decider for Aston Martin, as they had plenty of other issues. Not the trouble-free racing the four times world champion was hoping for, and hopefully, Aston Martin and Sebastian Vettel can get things together to put up a bit of a challenge for the rest of the season. Andrea Seidel says Danny Ricciardo will get up to speed in a few more weekends. McLaren boss Seidel says it's a matter of a few more race weekends before Ricciardo gets things right and matches Lando Norris' pace. Ricciardo, of course, was horribly outpaced in the last race where Lando got a podium after asking the team to have Ricciardo move out of the way and being justified as he was so much quicker. They went on to say that it takes time, it's not a surprise, it's part of the process of integrating a new driver and with the experience Daniel has and the experience we have within the team, it's just a matter of a few more race weekends before Daniel is fully comfortable in our car. Of course Norris has shown incredible pace, he's impressing a lot of pundits out there and Ricardo has not looked on the same level. Now let's hope he gets it sorted out because everybody would love to see Ricardo at full pace and battling the young brilliance of Lando Norris and putting McLaren back up there. McLaren of course set up to have a great fight with Ferrari for third so far this season. Sergio Perez gets the dreaded vote of confidence. Something we usually see in football but after another disappointing performance by Perez he was given the vote of confidence. After a disappointing race which included two spins, Red Bull team principal Christian Horner said that Perez has showed glimpses of greatness and insists he will soon deliver. Despite everything Horner has to say, it seems that the Red Bull number two driver curse is still around and that Perez is the latest one to suffer. Latifi misses his own crash. Yep, you read that right. Nicholas Latifi said conditions were so difficult at the start of the race at Imola that he had no idea he had made contact with Nikita Mazepin's Haas when he crashed out on the opening lap. My word. And he said, After, at the first off I had, I caught a bit of rear locking. So I was off the track at the bottom of the Aqua Minerali corner, came back on, staying to the left side as much as I could. I thought Vettel was the last corner as I saw him go by me. I came back on the track, naturally the line takes you there anyway, because obviously it was very slippery. I didn't even see Nikita. There was a spray and looking back at the video, he would have been in my blind spot. But I was not aware that he was there, so actually up until quite a lot after the incident. I was in the medical center for quite a long time due to the paperwork. I thought I just got a bit of wheel spin and spun off because of that. So I was not aware I made contact with Nikita until a lot afterwards. McLaren sells off their HQ. That's it. McLaren Group have sold their magnificent Woking headquarters to American investors and now will be leasing back the facility. McLaren's technology center has been on the market for several months and now Global Net Lease has paid 170 million pounds for the facility. McLaren will lease them back over the next 20 years at least which will add much needed funds to the team in the short term who have of course suffered due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Earlier in December, the team also sold a 15% stake in its Formula 1 operation to American MSP Sports Capital. 
which could rise to 33% in the future as the team aimed to raise funds to compete at the very front of Formula 1. Zach Brown says, Just to be looking forward now, having all the tools we need is extremely exciting for our racing team, and I think we have a very strong future ahead of us. But we will have to see if this has been wise to sell off the facility, which will of course now be a drain on them every month or every year, however this lease works. Lastly, our meme of the week. Have a look at these three. I'm going to leave you with them. We're playing out with some music and I hope you enjoy them. Enjoy the three, enjoy the week and I hope you have a great time out there. God bless, goodbye.